electrolyte gated FET. So that uses a electrolyte to bridge your gate electrode to your transducer. In our case, transducer is graphene. And the way the FET operates in its sort of on-off function is that you apply your potential from your gate to your transducer through the electrolyte. And in that way, you can turn your graphene from on, because it's graphene is an always on transistor, to, to semi-off to, to back on. Okay, IPXers. Again, at the world famous studios of IP Exchange, we're joined by Martin, who works with a company called Paragraph. And we're going to talk truly, and you love you, you know that I love saying this phrase, alien technology. Now, if somebody said to you 10 years ago, we're going to turn graphene into, into, into components, and it's going to change the world, it's going to add a whole new dimension as to how we work with electronics. Um, not for the first time, I'd have been accused of being completely barking mad. But this time, we are going to talk to Martin who's going to talk to us about uh, graphene and what his company at Paragraph do. So, uh, hello, Martin. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Yeah, good to be here. Good, good. OK, so today's design engineers, millions of them, they have got to deal with massive, massive decisions. Personal decisions because it's their careers, financial decisions because uh, there's sometimes hundreds of thousands, millions of pounds involved in designing new products and trying out new technologies and putting into their system. The world of graphene. They've got to think about and explore the world of graphene. So give us a little introduction about how you see graphene and how you see it changing the world so you can reassure those millions of design engineers that they should start exploring the world of graphene. Yeah, well, you know, as you sort of said in your intro, graphene has been talked about and you know hypothesized about this big future technology for a long time um and you know along with that people talk about you know high charge carrying mobility um surface sensitivity um you know, those sort of improved properties the issue has always been that you can't scale it and uh, what paragraph brings to the table is a way to produce you know, scalable high quality graphing Right. So when you talk about scale, that's a, I mean, that's always a, that's a quite a subjective word, yeah, isn't it? So um, what, what, uh, what, how many, you know, you can buy these things. So first of all, what, what can people buy from Paragraph that is a, a graphene component today? Yeah. So there's two product streams that we have, two families. One is a magnetic hall sensor. One is a um, electrolyte gated field effect transistor. Um, but right. talk, talking about scale, when, yeah, I should probably clarify. When we talk about scale, we're talking about introducing graphene production into traditional semiconductor fabrication lines. So, you know, semiconductor scale, um, grown on wafer. Um, so, yeah, very large scale manufacturability capabilities. Right. Okay. So let's just just let's just dive into those. Let's just dive into those two product areas. Um, I'm a design engineer. I have a legacy design, which is what we talk about. We know that um, design engineers' big, big challenge every day is incremental design improvement, finding new ways of doing things better. Uh, and those two technologies, two very well-recognized technologies, they've got uh, current supply chain, established suppliers, people who are edging forward in those, in those kind of um, product areas. Mm -hmm. um, explain the differentiation that using Paragraph's graphene products, each, each in order, uh, why and the benefits of thinking about going into those into those product ranges instead of what they're already doing. I realise that obviously it's a it's a it's a different thing, but a, still a different thing is a jump. Yeah. Um, so on the first point on the magnetic sensors, the graphene hall sensors, I would caveat everything I'm about to say with that I'm not really a uh, part of that product team, so I'm not too versed on it. So please contact Paragraph if um, <laughs> you want more information or to say that guy didn't know what he was talking about. But the... I'm sure they won't say that, Martin. I'm on the call. I'm on the call. There's already somebody who doesn't know what he's talking yeah. about on the call. We don't need another. <laughs> this is this is all about this is all about an in, an, an introduction. It's not yeah, about yeah. let's do a deep dive. Yeah. So I mean, currently what the graphene hall sensor gives is linearity over a very large temperature range, um, as well as um, uh, you know, use cases at very low, you know, uh, cryogenic temperatures, um, okay, okay. and sort of stability and you know reliability in the, in that area. So if you are wanting something like that in your product, I think that's where the the, the graphene hall sensor fits in. 
Right. So uh, in, in, in extreme environments, places where maybe maybe other components might find themselves compromised in some way, graphene adds a, a, a new layer of reliability that you maybe not get elsewhere. That's potentially a fair way to put it. But like I say, please contact us for more information. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's talk about the other one then. The other one is a, is a, is a trickier case, um, although I need to have more information here. So the electrolyte gated FET, there's not really any products on the market at the moment using electrolyte gated FETs as sensing technologies. So, you know, this is a sensing platform for environmental, bio or um, agricultural sensing. And there's yep. not really anything doing that with electrolyte gated FETs um, at the okay. moment. So we're really hoping that we can you know, with our new, more reliable, scalable platform, encourage people to collaborate with us to start to start using it. Okay. And, and an electrolyte, an, an electro, electrolytic gated FET. Explain what that is. Yeah. So that uses a electrolyte, so a high ionicity solution, to bridge your a gate electrode to your transducer. Um, in our case, transducer is graphene, and yep. The way the FET the way the FET operates in its sort of on off function is that you apply your potential from your gate to your transducer through the electrolyte. Um, I see. Yep. Uh, and in that way, you can turn your graphene from on because it's graphene is sort of an, an always on transistor to, to semi off to, to back on um, in this electrolyte gated conf configuration. So, so it's ambipolar. You, you go sort of low resistance, high resistance, low resistance again. Yes, I see. So it's a, a very binary process. So if we just drill down a little bit, no pun intended, with agricultural sensors, uh, what kind of things would you be sensing in an, ag in an agricultural uh, uh, environment where you say that that, that electrolyte um, on-off binary process would be a great benefit? Uh -huh. So there's a potential to look, look for um, yeah, yeah heavy metal ions or even non-heavy metal ions. So anything that, that shouldn't be there um, in the environment. There's also not, not reducing anything to practice the, the potential to look for uh, pesticides uh, and other chemicals that, that you wouldn't like to be in that environment. Right, right. So you see graphene being, I mean, the whole idea of the, uh, you know, we, we read every day about uh, you know, all over the world where uh, naughty people have put naughty things into the ground and they've ended up getting into the overall ecosystem, into rivers and uh, and, and affecting, you know, all sorts of environmental uh, places. So mm. um, graphene would be a much more effective way of doing that or a more scalable way of doing that or a more sensitive way of doing that or all three, maybe. Yeah, I mean, potentially all three. We don't have any data set to say... Uh... Yes or no. If you look in the literature, you, you'll get information around the um, sort of sensitivity improvements you might see. Um, but we wouldn't like to make any claims about our product that actually. <laughs> uh, no, no, to ourselves. no. But this is just an overview. Yeah. This is just an overview. We know that we know that we're in the world of uh, not quite alien science, but we know that we're in experimental and working out how this amazing product can turn into into new things. So we understand mm -hmm. that on this mm -hmm. call. Okay. So um, second to last question. Uh, where do you see the future of graphene? Where, where, you know, if you just take your agricultural sensor uh, example, because that's your specialist subject, um, where do you see that? You know, maybe in five years' time. I know five years is a very, very long time. But where do you see? How do you see graphene changing the world in the world of agriculture, for instance? Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the the ideal scenario, I suppose, there would be a handheld, portable device that you know users can can use to to monitor in this case agricultural systems um you know with, with the graphene sensor right right or in the same way you carry things around to do soil samples and that kind of thing today um which is done in a very sort of i mean when i've seen people doing soil, soil samples it's, it always looks like an incredibly complicated thing that they do doing all sorts of strange very manual um uh experimentation it's like a mad scientist wandering around with lots of bottles and chemicals but you could you could see that now being done in a much more automatic automated way with graphene yeah 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 definitely and i would say that you okay. know, we're not we're not focusing on agricultural systems either that's just one one example no no I um a lot of other absolutely realize just, just 
yes, understand there's lots of other areas. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a design engineer today. I've uh, been listening to Martin and think, well, oh, that's interesting. Not just agricultural, other, other, any other ever sensing areas where you, where you do this binary on off, a uh, very efficient way of doing uh, sensing. Um, how would I, rather than the answer of going to, going to paragraph.com, is there a development environment that you can get hold of and play with uh, that they can experiment with? Um, yes, I, I think I understand the question. You know, we sell these these GFETs, um, but we also sell a breakout board that you can then plug into any sort of yep. commercial SMU. Um, we have information on if you're not sort of set up to do that sort of thing. Uh, you know, ways to get started with different reader systems or you know, by potential stats, potential stat systems. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's a break. We, we, we'd call it a development board, but you're absolutely welcome to call it a breakout board. That's the same difference. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and does that cost them? Do, do, do they buy them? Or if they've got a volume opportunity, do you, if they share that project idea with you, are you prepared to um, give them one of those to play with and do it? Um, collaboratively with them? Yeah, I think it depends on, on the scope of the project. Um, but we're definitely open to conversations. The easiest thing to do is to buy it, I suppose. But uh, there are price breaks at certain volumes as well. And you know, if it's a very large scale project, we can definitely discuss and talk about ways to. OK, how much does a breakout board cost today? Oh, man, great question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to guess. I don't want to guess. I think it's it's around. No, I don't want to guess. I'll, I'll get it wrong. We'll check. We'll yeah. check when we do the edits. We'll put a we'll put a price along. It. Just let me know what it is, and we'll put it across, and we'll have a moment of comedy together. But it's okay that you don't know. You're the scientist. Okay, my my You're friend the scientist. Who, my sister showed me it's eighty eight pounds on our website. The breakout board. My God, that's interactive, isn't it? That's like a moment in Joe Rogan where the researcher comes up with the uh, with. With with the information uh, yeah. offline, no online. You have right. any, excellent. Any more? If you have some really ludicrous questions, I can get 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 some more searching done if you like. Yeah, we could go down a right <laughs> rabbit hole with that, but we won't do that. Okay, so uh, that's been really excellent. We talk about so you know, we talk about two really, we talk about three really big things: disruptive technology. We talk about how incredibly important and difficult it is for design engineers to make big decisions about changing technology. I personally think the industry doesn't take that seriously enough. They think that if they uh, send them a cardboard box with a data sheet, somebody will place an order for a million parts. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also want to give them an insight into how uh, this stuff actually isn't really ailing technology. It really exists. And then how they can go about evaluating it. So, Martin, I think you've given a, given a very good representation of where the world of graphene is, particularly with Paragraph. Uh, some of the application areas that they can go and think about and potentially be very creative with. So. Um, Thank you for being silly, silly Sky Sports um, pun now. Thank you for being live and exclusive on IP Exchange. Anybody who follows football will know how silly I'm being. But uh, thank you very much and uh, look forward to an update very soon when you've got something new to say. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much.